All right, my friends, so the barbell approach to retirement income planning is literally just like this, like a barbell, you know, like the, uh, the drawings of the old gold gym guy with the muscles bulging. He's got this, now that bar be going like that, but we, got, we have $400,000 of assets, of liquid assets, IRAs and things of that nature. Husband and wife come to me and said, Josh, you got 400,000 uh, bucks. We're doomed, aren't we? And I said, well, let's, let's look at this for sure. All right, they need $50,000 a year of income, of which they're getting 30,000 from Social Security. So that's 30,000 a year from Social Security is 2,500 bucks a month, my friends. That's not, I mean, literally, that is not uh, uh, Jeffrey Bezos type of income from Social Security, all right? So that means they need 20,000 a year from their portfolio. 20,000 from a $400,000 portfolio is 5% a year. Trust me, I calculated before I did this to make sure my numbers are right. All right, so you see how that works. I mean, you're saying I need 20,000 a year. I got 400,000 to work with from my portfolio. I got 30,000 from Social Security. So what I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna advise them is you put 300% or 300,000 of that money or 75% into stocks and 25% into bonds. Essentially a three to one ratio, if you will. In this case, it doesn't matter. But we're just basically saying we got five years of income. Five years of income. All right, now you can have three to five. The more the better, but we don't have, you shouldn't have more than five years. Let's just put it that way. Because if you have more than five years, it does become quite inefficient where you're not getting upside, enough upside of the markets. All right. So if you look at our trusty uh, thing here, we say, okay, so we have five years of income. Now, right now, the Ginny Mae is probably paying 2.5%. You know, CD is probably 2.5%. Cash is probably 1.7% or something like that. So we're just going to say it averages 2.5% with no downside risk at all. Now, we're just going to assume no downside risk whatsoever. But we're not going to use 2.5% is 2,500 a year of interest, too, by the way. We're not, and we're not even going to use that. We're just going to pretend like it doesn't exist. Because I want to focus on this side right here. All right. So they need 20000 a year of income. All right. So what happens here? If this goes up, they pull a twenty k there. Oops. If this goes down, they pull the twenty k from here. Oops. You see, what I mean, literally, it's that simple. If this goes up in the first year, they pull it from there. If this goes down in the first year, they pull it from here, all right? And if this goes up and then down, they pull it from here. Any year that this is down, they pull the income from here. It's literally that simple. I mean, literally, just that simple. Any year this is down. Now, the, I, the ideal thing, if this, went, if this was in 2000, so it's down nine, down 12 and down 22 so let's look at this and 2000 is down nine so we got 300,000 bucks minus nine percent minus uh 12 percent minus 22 percent so it's at 187 in 2000 and uh so at the end of 2001 zero one and two at, at the end of 2002 is down to 187. All right, so now the following year, so we've taken three years out of this. So let me erase this real quick. So now we're at the end of 2002. And I think 2002 is absolutely the way to look at it, as opposed to uh, uh, like night 2000. You can look at 2008 as well, but 2002 is more, there's, there's a longer time frame of, uh, you know, for, I mean, literally, it went into in March of 2003, the mark is going down. So 2002, you had to spread your distribution out over a longer time frame, literally three years. So at the end of 2002, this was down to 187. And we got uh, 60, no, we got 40,000 in here. Oops. That's gonna have to work. We got 40,000 here, all right? So now what do you do next? Because the following year, if memory serves, this 187 was up 29% or something like that. So in 2003, I think it's up 29%. All right, so now we've, this is what we're looking at. 2187 times 1.29, this is up to 241. Now, so we're sitting at 241 and 40 at the end of 2000, this is probably 42, but at the end of 2003. So at the end of 2000, we took the money from here. The end of 2001, we took the money from here. The end of 2002, we took the money from here. The end of 2003, well, we have this, uh, a choice to make. Do we take it from here at 241 or do we take it from here at 40? And that's, a, that's the scenario that it gets a little bit dicey because you're like, man, 
If you take it from here, you're allowing this to go up again another year. But if you take it from here, then you're, you're literally locking in some losses because you started with 300,000 bucks. I would take it from here. All right, now the situation will always dictate, but I would take it from here. And the reason I would is I want to get that, I'm trying to get this as much as I can close to $300,000 again before I start drawing it out. That's the whole reason you have five years. I want to get that as close to uh, 300,000 bucks. And if memory serves in 2003, 29%, 2004, I'll say 7%. So now we're at 20K here. And 241 times seven, I think it was 7%, 2004 times 1.07. Is that 258? All right, so now we're at 2005. We're going into 2005. We've got 20,000 here, 258 there. What do you do? That's the challenge, man, because now you're sitting there thinking, ooh, ooh. I think in this case, you gotta start pulling from here now. I really, really do. So now you're like, all right, and this is where it gets tough. You're like, I'm gonna pull the 20K from here because I wanna keep enough to cover me when the markets do go south. As we remember in 2008, it did. So now I'm at 238. I think uh, in 2005, we weren't up much. I think we're up 5%. So we go 258 times 1.05, we're at 271 minus 20,000. So we are at 251 and at the end of 2005. Here's still at 20. All right, 2006, I don't remember what the markets did. I, I just don't recall. We'll say, let's say 10%, I just don't remember. So we're up 10%. So we're at 298 here before we pulled money out. 298, and again, we're still at 20 because we, we haven't done anything. I'm pulling the money out again from here. All right, so now we're at 278, that's in 2006. And we're getting close to, we're getting close to, um, to 300,000 again. So now I'm still sitting on 20,000 here. And I'm just sitting on that as my kind of, my reserve account. So this is dicey. Now this won't likely happen. We haven't had too many instances of people retiring in 2001 and two, and then getting killed in 2008. It has happened. We haven't had too many instances. It's just not likely to happen, but this is the worst case scenario. So 2006, I literally, I don't remember what the more, we'll just say 5% again, I just don't recall. So at 278 plus, we'll say 5% again, we're right back at 291. All right, so in 2000, was it 26 or so, I can't remember. We're at 291, we're gonna take 20 out. So we're right back at 271. All right, so we're still at seven here. All right, so here's the problem. 2008 comes around and we're down 37%. 2008 comes around, we're down 37% minus 37%. We are down to 170. All right. Now we're exhausting this. So now we got nothing. So here we're down to 170. We got nothing. All right. 170 and zero. So, I mean, in this stage, again, that is literally the worst scenario we've ever had. Even worse than 73, 74 relative to what we're trying to solve here which is pulling money off the table while retired. Now we've had a cut, we have three instances, the aughts, the seventies and the thirties. We've had three instances of pretty bad dicey retirement planning years, but we're now eight years in, all right? I mean, if you retired at 65 in 2000, now you're 73 years old. I mean, is your spending gonna still need 20,000 a year? I don't know, I don't know. I'm just saying, even after all this with pulling 5% a year out, we are still at 170, even though we don't have anything here. So now we're just gonna have to ride this. That's all we're gonna have to do. And thankfully, did I already pull the, uh, the, the uh, 20,000 off? No, I didn't pull it from here. So now we got nothing. Now we're just gonna have to ride this guy. There's no other way around that. So you say, okay, 170, I think the markets were up 20% the next year, and 29%. So we're at 219 minus the 20,000 we're taking out. We're at 200,000. Sheeps, because we pulled the, 20, the 20K out. Now you're just gonna have to ride. You're gonna have to let it ride for sure. And if that means you gotta do some belt tighten, you gotta do some belt tighten. But at the end of the day, what happened was uh, you more than made up for not having any money here to the extent that that 200,000 bucks, even though you're pulling 10% a year off, over the next 10 years, you, you've done pretty well, my friends. Now, at the end of 20, you're, you know, you're, probably in a, in, you're probably in a bad place, but then you're 85 years old. I, you know, that's the issue with like a reverse mortgage or something like that. If this time were to come and you want to avoid drawing this down or taking that, well, just do a reverse mortgage. Just have it at the ready, just in case you do have to retire at the worst case scenario. It's not likely to happen, 
But if it were, you want to avoid, because by t- 10 years from now, if you're taking 10% of your out, which you are, there's no way this is going to survive. It's not. And you're out here because you happen to retire in the worst possible scenario. And you can say the 4% rule, we can, instead of doing uh, 5%, we can do 4%, 16,000. It's going to be the same. You still run out of money. And the reason you run out of money is simply because the market and the odds are so bad. If you retired in the odds, you are in a world of hurt. It's just bad luck, man. Now, the, the interesting thing is if you had the Wellington Fund, you did not get crushed nearly to the extent that the markets did in 2008. Uh, 2000, you didn't lose any money. 2001, I don't think the Wellington lost money in 2001. 2002, it did, but not to the extent at all of what uh, the S&P 500 did. And that's the benefit of the Wellington Fund, or funds similar to that, is that it did give you the reprieve uh, when the markets got chaotic in 2000, 2001, and 2002, and then again 2008. They did, you know, of those five, four significant down years, the Wellington Fund was down, t- two of them pretty significantly, but two they were not, which meant you didn't have to take money out of here. You were able to take money out of here instead because the Wellington Fund was up. Hope that makes sense, but just I, this is the worst case scenario right there. Just showed it to you, and you still last at 20 years roughly. So that could be enough to get the job done? Probably not. Is there a better alternative? We, I, don't know, I don't know what it would be, frankly. I don't know, other than having a reverse mortgage at the ready. So that way, when you're in this situation right here, you have another source of income you can draw on as opposed to drawing down a 10% distribution rate on 20, uh, 200,000 bucks that's left. It's not a bad method at all. Wellington Fund would have rescued you in this scenario, but that's the Wellington Fund kind of serves as the, the three buckets because you do have some bonds in the Wellington, but it didn't give you the same upside. That's the drawback. But when you're in retirement, the upside is less uh, beneficial than watching the downside risk. So I hope this helps. The barbell approach is wonderful. I love it. It's simple. It's not likely this worst case scenario will happen, but even if it were to happen, there is no escaping. There's no escaping the, the magnificent drawdown that we saw in the odds. There's no, I don't care if you're Warren Buffett, if you're just some Joe Schmo with his dog in his basement in Milton, Georgia, you got hammered. And if you're taking money out of your portfolio to live on during those times, there's no escaping it, my friends. I don't care what you had, you got hammered. And uh, 20 years from now, 20 years hence, you're still not sitting pretty. But there are alternatives too, which is reverse mortgage, in which maybe either reduce the amount of money you need from the portfolio, or to give you the reprieve from having to pull out. So that's one of the reasons why you need to look at those. Now, hope this helps. We'll see you.